So we're going to treat a snake bite to the hand and 95% of all bites happen on the extremities. So that's where most likely you're going to be treating one either on the hands, hands, feet or ankles. We open up our kit and you should find everything you need to properly treat a snake bite. First thing we want to do is make sure the danger's left the area. Has the snake gone? Make sure it's not nobody else going to get bitten. Take out our smart bandage. We're going to now tension to form square. That's going to help get the bandage into the right pressure range to do the job we need it to do. I'm going to leave the fingertips exposed so I can monitor blood flow. I'm going to start the bandage off, loop around, one turn to get going. And now I'm making my squares and I'm starting to work my way around the limb. We need the victim to stay as still as possible, keep them immobilised, keep them comfortable. The bandage is a powerful bandage so I don't need a lot of overlap to achieve the job that I want to do. I'm basically just overlapping at about 10 to 15 mil, I'm getting that tension into it. And you should practice this because it's not the easiest thing to do in the world first time. And you can imagine if there's a snake bite going on and you're the first data, you're going to be feeling a bit of adrenaline too, not just the victim. It's very easy to lose control of the bandage. And we're going to keep it just slightly bent, relaxed. If you're going to go for a sling, which is possible as well, you need to bandage the arm already bent so you don't get any tight spots. We're going to keep the arm straight so it's nice and comfortable. One smart bandage should get all the way for an arm. If you had a leg, you might need two bandages. If you run out of bandage, you just pick up where you left off. So I've got that on in, in place now. I'm just going to tuck it in at the top here. It'll hold itself there. It's nice and firm. I can see my squares get a gauge. That should be feeling quite firm on the patient. I can touch the fingers and see that there's still blood flow colours still returning to the fingers because remember we're not trying to cut off the circulation here we just want to restrict the lymphatic vessels which are just below the surface of the skin so that's the next step we take our SAM splint now you could use anything that's available you could use a stick rolled up piece of newspaper uh, anything like that's going to work but these are unreal so we fold it out to get our length it's really rigid, um, stiff. I'm going to just rest Jackie's arm into there and I'm going to now mould the splint around it. Like so. That should be feeling comfortable there, Jackie. Just sit it on there, like that. And I might just get you to hold just there for the moment and we'll start attaching the split. Excellent. When you're in a crisis, that's all you need is a bit of plastic packaging to get off. It's not a bad idea to maybe take your stuff and your kit out of the plastic. It doesn't have an expiry date, so you've got no problems with it. So this is your typical crepe or elasticized crepe bandage. Very difficult to get the right pressure with these, but excellent as a second bandage to attach the splint. So over the top, over the top, like so. Just relax into that, Jack. We're good now. Tucking that in. There. There we are. <laughs> nice and comfortable. How's that feel? 
Firm. Good, mm, firm. Very firm. And and supported. Yep. So you might have to sit like this for a while. Yeah, well I won't be moving arrives. anytime soon. We don't want movement at the joint, but if we just rest the arm, rest the arm on the body here, we keep everything still. It's not possible to put a bandage on, then start walking out. Once you start moving, you're going to kick the whole process of um, lymphatic vessels moving, moving the, the venom, and you're going to undo the good work you've done there. So always make sure that the help is brought to the victim. You look very comfortable there. Don't fall asleep. Okay, so there's your smart bandage, and there is your survival safe snake bite kit. The extra things we've got in it that we didn't use just then, if you're unsure how to do the process, you can pop out your first aid basics. We've got our steps, check for danger, stop and drop, in other words, immobilize the patient, apply a firm compression bandage preferably a smart bandage, immobilise with the SAM splint, monitor and reassure the victim. Because remember, snake bite can be a frightening, emotionally charged experience. It's very likely that the victim's going to have a high, ra high ra heart rate and be quite, you know, afraid. So you need to check that they're okay. You need to explain to them that they're in good hands. We've got some good equipment to work on you with. We've got that. We've got a pen. You can mark a little X, you can make a little X on the spot. When they get to the hospital, they can peel that back and they can take a swab of the bite site to determine what the snake was. On the back of your card here, you've got your basic CPR for an adult or a child. Remember, the patient could lose consciousness. They may need to be able to put into, put into the rest position. You'll have to keep an eye on that and follow your first aid procedures. And you can take some patient notes while you're waiting for the ambulance to arrive. Alright, if you need to apply CPR, you've got a mask in there. You've got a thermal blanket in case the victim's going into shock and there might be a long wait for the health, for the medical services to arrive. But a bandage that's put on correctly and, and the procedures are followed, you've got every reason to feel you can spend several hours waiting for the help to get to you provided you follow those simple rules of, emo of pressure, applying pressure, broad pressure and keeping the victim immobilised.